Welcome to Artistic Adventures, and this is it, part eight, the last video in our Blythe customization project, steampunk style. I have so much to do on this video, so hang in there. We got hats, goggles, and all kinds of cute accessories that we're going to finish this doll up with. Here we go. Here's our doll from last week, and I did put the coat on her so you could kind of see how that looks. We're going to do some styling with it, but one thing I want to do before I lose it is attach this little tiny pocket wallet. <laughs> I know I'm going to lose it. I did find a little small chain for it, so I think I want to put this like coming out of the pocket of the coat because uh, there's nothing really much on the outside. So I think I'm going to do that and I think the best way to do it is to put some glue inside the pocket and then put the uh, watch chain down in there. I think that's what I'll do because I don't really have another way to attach it. So yeah, that's thing of glue here. Here we go. Been working on doll hair today, so if you see alpaca fiber flying around, that's what it is. I'm making some dolls for Halloween. I'll show them to you when I'm finished. They're pretty cool. So I'm just going to get a glob of my E6000 and put it inside the pocket and then I'm going to put the chain in on top of it and hopefully that's going to hold oh. So she'll have her pocket watch. But you gotta have a pocket watch with steampunk. There's no other way around it. Now, uh, while that's kind of setting, because that's... Ah, see, it just fell off. That's gonna pull it out. Get back in there. Okay. I'm gonna prop her kind of on her side there. All right. I want to work on the hat. This is, uh, video is going to be back and forth with some things while we let things dry. Now, I have this leather, but it's the, uh, this is like a scrap leather that I got somewhere. But this was the widest piece, so the brim is going to have to be this big. It's not going to be big enough like that it will sit down on her head. It'll be more like a fascinator, kind of tilted off to one side, I guess. So, uh... Uh, this piece that's pretty even, which we could use uh, as the sides of the hat. And I don't know, I think it's probably too tall. So I just kind of want to position it here and take a look at it. Yeah, it's probably too tall. So I'm going to cut off part of that. Try to keep it even though. I don't know if any of you guys are working on dolls. I hope you are. I would love to see some of them. We do have a Facebook page, if you didn't know, where you can share work. I would love it if people put pictures up of things. Alright, so let's see. That's probably better. And it looks like I'm going to cut the leather about right there. And see if that looks like it's about right. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to put some glue on this side. And then we'll just lap it over a little bit. I think this glue is starting to dry up. Pet it open while I was working on all this hair. Alright. That will work. Yeah, that looks good.
Now we're going to have to do the top, so I think the best way to do that would be to put this on here and kind of mark, maybe see if a white, a white pencil, white colored pencil, which of course I don't have, well maybe yellow then, let's try yellow and see if that'll work to draw around here. Yeah, it shows up, I guess. Not great, but well enough, I think, that I can see it to cut. We'll cut it a little bit big, and then if we need to, we can always... Yeah, because that's very uneven. <laughs> cut that. Oh... Okay, we'll just make it a little big and then we can always cut it down if we need to. Also, the way I had it was a little lopsided. These are just kitchen shears, by the way, that I've appropriated for my craft room. They cut through just about anything, so they're great for the leather. So it's pretty round, pretty much round. Alright, now this was just a little uneven here, so I'm going to try to see if I can cut this the best way. very fraction and this needs to come off. Let's see if I get it from this side. Yes, there we go. Okay. So now we can just glue the top on and if we have to, we can trim it. But that, that looks pretty good. Make sure I get it round before I put that on it, or it will be bad. So I'm going to just put the glue around the edge. This is old glue. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's like almost dried up. It's not sticking to anything. So we'll try a new batch here. Much better, yeah. Alright, so we're just going to go around here, apply the glue to the edge. Boop! Like that. And then we'll put it on top. I'm just going to kind of let that dry because I don't want to mess with it and get glue you know, on the outside of the leather because it will it will show even though we can wipe it off to some degree. And then I do want to try to open up the brim because it will sit on her head better if we have this open. So I'm just going to cut out part of the center here. Kind of remember how much I needed, but I want to have a little bit left on the inside for the hat to stick to it. So we got that. Trim just a little bit more. And we're going to put glue on the hat this time. I 
and then we'll just set this down on top of our brim. This is easier than putting the glue on the brim because I'm not exactly sure where it will fit. Okay. So there's our top hat. Wasn't too hard. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Then we have a couple of other things to make. I did show you this little gun and it had a lot of little punch out parts to it. I get white paint on it. And it had, uh, let's see, it had a couple pieces with it. It had the top, the uh, thing that has the bullets in it. Whoop, I think it goes like that. Yeah, and then, of course, we don't have any bullets. And then it had these two pieces. They were black, but I painted them uh, kind of a bronze color because I want to glue them on the sides, and that was going to make it look a little bit more steampunk. So we'll go ahead and put the... Uh, bullet casing in there and then the top that would be the part I guess that would slide if you were fought, you know getting ready to fire it. Let's see how does that go? Oh shoot I think I just broke it. Oh no I didn't. Okay so we got that part on. So I just want to glue these on the sides kind of make it look a little bit steampunky. Who knows what they are for, but they're going to be steampunky. All right. So we got that side. And we're going to put some on. I'm just going to put my glue on here. And then put it over here. Put our other odd looking cylinder. And that's going to be our steampunk pistol. We already have the holster made for that. Uh, I do have this knife that we're going to give her a place where I had two knives. This one, I don't know, maybe that looks a little bit too Navy Sealish. <laughs> I don't know. This one looks more like a hunter, I guess. Or an army ranger. <laughs> oh, don't really either of them look all that steampunk, but I think maybe we'll use this one. It's most like a normal looking knife. Why not make a holster for her? the side of our boot. So I'm just going to lay this on there like that. And let's see, I think I'll just cut a piece. I'll cut it out and then hopefully that's going to fit. We'll see. I guess that looks pretty good. So I just want to put a little bit of glue on the edge and then I'll just I'll glue it together and then hopefully maybe it'd be better to do it with this so I can get a little fine line of glue. Yeah that's probably a better way to do it. and then just lay this on top of it and it'll glue together at the edges and then we can try to put the uh, knife in it and I think that will just fit into the side of the boot or do I want to put that on 
Hmm. You know, okay, so we have the holster for the gun in here. So we could put this like right here. That might be cooler. Yeah, I think that would be cooler. So we'll just do a strap to go around her right under the knee kind of area. And I'm going to see if I have another buckle. Yeah, I actually do. Another one that I made. We'll use that. And, all right, where'd my strip go? Why does this happen to me? Like, I just cut it out. I just cut it out. And it's gone. Oh, there it is. Oh, God. All right. So I'm going to measure this around her leg here, under the knee. And looks like I can cut it about right there. I'm going to cut a little point like we did in the other one. That'll help us get it through the buckle. I always actually like this part a lot where I'm doing accessories. I don't know why. I just I think it's, you know, making stuff up. Like finding out a way to do it and then watching it come together. I just love that. Okay. So, the knife case, just put the knife in there. Especially weapons. I don't know why I have a thing for weapons. I don't know if I ever told you about I was on the fencing team in college. I think that that's why I, I don't know. I've always had a thing for swords. I love movies with the swords. Anything with swords. Of course, we grew up, our household, we grew up with guns everywhere. Of course, I don't really, I mean, I've had guns before, more, you know, just for target practice kind of things. I never did hunting or anything like that because I could never kill an animal. I just couldn't do it. It's not me. But uh, knives and guns and all that, we grew up with it. So kind of familiar with a lot of stuff. All right, let's see. I want to glue the buckle on the inside because the knife will be on the outside. Alright, let me just put a little glue on that while I've got this out. And we'll glue this down on top of it. And then, you know, I just, I think that's too small. I think it needs to be taller, so I'm going to get another piece of that fabric. The knife doesn't really go all the way in it. Oh, bows and arrows, too. I'm all about that. I do still have a bow. I have both a regular bow and a... I have a small crossbow. 
I don't know why I was always fascinated with that. I always watched those shows about William Tell when I was young. They don't have those shows on anymore. And my bow is actually a replica, replica of Susan's bow from Narnia that, that she was given when, when they went to Narnia. If you saw the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe movie. It's a lot harder to shoot. I had a compound bow at one time, and um, that was fun to shoot. I think what it is with the regular bow is you need more strength because you have to hold it still long enough to aim. Whereas with you know the compound bow and the crossbow, the power doesn't come from you holding it. It's just you know it's a release, and then it it the power is is in the mechanism of the bow. So I always identified with like pirates, you know, swashbucklers and Robin Hood. I love those old movies. Anybody out there like those things too? It's <laughs> just me. <laughs> just crazy me. But then I love to read fantasy, so like I'm a big fan of all the like Lord of the Rings and I watched all the Game of Thrones. I actually read the Game of Thrones when they first came out and that was 10 years before they had the, the show. So I was a big fan of the books before the show came out. And I have to say I was very disappointed in the end. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of controversy about that. Not so much it's not the acting it's not the that they were bad actors or anything like that it's just I loved Daenerys from the minute I read about her in the first book and I didn't buy how quickly she went from being the you know savior of the slaves and the people to be in the crazy person. I just didn't buy it the way they presented it in the show. And maybe in the books it will be a slower build up and will be more believable, but you know, she went from being like I said, this is it. This is, if they could just write books about Daenerys, I don't even care about Sansa and Arya and all those other people. I don't even care about John. I mean he's cute but I don't care about him in the book at all. I just couldn't wait to get to the next part about Daenerys. Because she was cool. I'm going to cut a little bit of that off. I think this will be a better sheath. And let's see how this one works. I don't know if y'all remember, maybe maybe my, some of my older viewers, when I did the uh, Vampire Slayer, the um, the big ball jointed doll, the one third size ball jointed doll. Yeah, I did a uh, big one-third size ball jointed doll and did her whole vampire slayer costume and I did the, the little bitty crossbow <laughs> and it would actually and it actually worked. That was cool. Alright, so we got that. Oh man, you know the thing is, I'm gonna have to turn her on her side. I think the, the watch is dry now, so. I'm going to turn her on her side to attach this knife or it will fall off before the glue dries. 
And where did my glue go? Oh man, I'm losing things right and left. Oh, there it is. It's right in front of me the whole time. All right, so just gonna put a little blob of glue there. And we'll put our knife I'm angling it slightly because it would be I think easier for her to reach down and get it you don't have to think about those things <laughs> oh. all right now we still have the sword and I may just stick that in her belt I think I'll do that let it show instead of the doing a holster because she's already got the gun holster she's got this holster I thought about one time doing one like a over the shoulder for the sword but I think she's gonna just put it in the belt all right let's go back to the hat for right now this is getting pretty good and dry now while it's really getting completely dry we're gonna work on making it steampunky so the brim is kind of uneven mostly because of the way I glued it on here <laughs> so I'm gonna just trim it up so that it looks more even all the way around and then we're gonna steampunk it So, the things that we look for with Steampunk, obviously chains and goggles and all that. We're going to make a pair of goggles, just not right this minute. But, we are going to use some tool, if I can find it. Actually, I may use this black lace instead, because this is a little more drapey. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I found a little tiny steampunk top hat that I made for a doll but didn't use. Isn't that funny? Oh, that's so cute. I forgot I had it. It's stuck in this lace. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to use this because it's a little more drapey. The tool's just stiff and it's, you know, for a the doll this size, it's not really going to stand out. So I'm going to cut like a band to go around the hat and um, ha sort of hang down in the back a little bit. Oh, that's just not working at all. Okay, I'm going to get out my fabric scissors that I have not ruined yet, believe it or not. I don't know. And then we'll cut a strip of this big enough to go around and it'll sort of scrunch up so I'm cutting it you know a little bit wide because I want it to scrunch up around the back all right let's see how this does Trim up some of the edges. And I've got this side way wider. So I want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to trim a little bit of this off to get it the same size as the other side. Alright, so we're just going to scrunch it up a little bit and put it around here and tie it. Get my sword out of the way. 
got interrupted with the phone ringing. Sorry, I had a couple of things I had to get done. Uh, so anyway, I tied this around there. Also, I trimmed up around the edges of this. I just used the scissors and, and went around and cut off any excess that was there. You can also cut off any excess glue that's sticking out, you know, so it doesn't look unsightly. And so that's done for now. We've got more to do on it, but I want to start making the goggles because uh, I'm going to have them actually attached to the, the top hat. So I took the uh, plastic I had colored green. Actually, I don't, I'm not using what I showed you earlier, which was a blue plastic. This is clear. And I just colored it on both sides with green marker. And I'm going to glue it down to the back of this uh, leather circle. And once it's glued on there, it'll be easier for me to trim it and get it to the size we want. But uh, I wanted to get this part done. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue around the inner edge of these two circles. And this will be the eye pieces for the goggles and then we'll build up around it and put uh, some sides and the nose piece and all that. So this will be fun. And I'm kind of trying to make them the size of her eyes, but they might not be exactly. I don't know. We'll see. They might be. Anyway, I'm going to glue this just on the back. Like that. And the same thing over here. And we have our start of our goggles. So I'm going to let those dry and be back in just a minute. One thing I want to add to these frames is some uh, metal. So I have this brass looking wire and uh, to get a nice round ring like I want around the goggles I just found something and actually it was the top of this hairspray that was about the size of that. You actually want to get something a little bit smaller because it the wire tends to spring away, so this is actually a little smaller than that. Uh, but after I uh, wound it around and it sprang back just a little bit, it was the perfect size. So you kind of have to, um, you know, mess with a couple of different things. Look at what you have around you, you know, lids of things, anything round. Uh, so I've got this one. Uh, looks like it's going to be perfect to just fit right around the edge of this. And then I'm going to put this one over here, and I just want to eyeball it. I think I need to pull it out just a little bit. Just kind of mess with it till you get it where you want it. Then when you do, you want to just cut off the excess wire and close your eyes or wear glasses because this wire pops off. This is also my pair of pliers where the spring keeps popping off. So you want to cut it just not not exactly even a little bit longer so that it will you know come together and not look like it's a gap. If you've messed with spring rings, you know what I'm talking about. With jewelry. So you just want it to meet and sort of press together. this one it's not cut yet so we're going to put these on with a little bit of glue and I want to put it on with a really tiny amount so let's see Need a little piece of plastic here just use a piece of this going to put some E6000 on this little piece of plastic and then I'm going to use my pointy tool to just dab a small amount of it right at the edge of the opening. A little dab will do ya.
You don't even have to go all the way around. Just hit a few places around the perimeter enough that it will hold it on there. So I don't want it to really squish out, you know, and look weird because this color of this uh, leather is light and if it gets the glue on it, it looks, it darkens it so you would see it. All right, I think that'll do it. That looks good. I'm going to set that aside and do the other side and I'll be right back. I've got both of these with the wires on them and I just want to show you how I'm sort of envisioning this is going to go together. So I took another piece of wire um, that I'm going to attach over the top of the wire on the glasses and to get that to fit I molded it over the same hairspray bottle. So it's going to go on there like that. And then this will be the nose piece. And then this piece will be over here. So it'll be like that. And I already twisted this up on the end because I wanted it to be a little bit decorative. I don't want it to just be a wire. I just took some round nose pliers and did a loop de loo. Lock that. All right. So that's going to be put on, but I'm not going to do that yet because I want to trim off some of this excess leather. It's just too much. It's too, too much. So, now that I think everything's pretty dry, I'm going to just go on in and cut some of this off. It's going to cut probably some of the plastic too, but with these kitchen shears, it cuts through it just fine. But this is an easy way to get it to where it's, you know, round and stuck together without too much trouble. Alright, so we got that one. That looks a whole lot better. We're going to go ahead and do this one. Next thing we'll have to do is the side pieces that would sort of be the strap that goes around the head. And we're going to be adding some decorations to that, so we're going to make it kind of wide. I guess these are sort of like goggles that maybe pilots would have worn, like maybe in World War One or something, while they were fighting with the Red Baron. <laughs> Well, I didn't do as good a job on this one getting it even. Oh well. Still not even. And if you have the little pieces of the uh, leather showing, you can always sort of cut at an angle behind the top of the leather and get rid of that so it doesn't show little fuzzy pieces from the back of the leather. to take some more of this leather and we're going to add a piece that's going to kind of come around not all the way in the middle but kind of off side off from the middle on the sides and make it become more narrow as it goes back so I'm going to use this kind of as a guide that works. I 
I'm going to cut right on top of that line so it won't show. If you're worried about that, you could always mark it on the back. All right. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to just cut the strap part and I'm just going to angle back four ways on both sides. and then straighten out. This is actually probably bigger than it needs to be, but I can fix that. Let go! So you have a piece that kind of looks like that. Now I am going to actually cut this down a little bit. So it looks more like that. Um, looking at these two, it looks like I trimmed that one more than I trimmed this one, so I'm going to trim this a little bit more so it matches. Having a little trouble because I'm right at the edge of the plastic on the back and it's sort of resistant to me cutting just a little bit of it. So I can kind of angle the thing and get it, I think. Now that's a little bit better. Nope, that's it. Sorry about that. It's my husband asking me something. All right. pretty close. So what I want to do now is try to glue this this strap part to the goggle eyepiece.
So I'm putting the glue right on the edge. Hopefully this will match up well enough that it'll stick and hold with no problem. And if it is a problem, we'll put a decoration over it and then no one will know. <laughs> Pretty successful, it looks like. Sorry, I had to get that closer to me. <laughs> Sometimes that's the only way to do it. All right, now we're gonna let that dry. It's gonna need to be really dry before we start bending it to put it on the hat. And I'm gonna go off camera and do the other side just like this. All right. I think these side pieces are dry now, so I wanna start doing some embellishment. These are gonna also help to strengthen this uh, seam here between the eyepiece and the strap. So I just found these bronze they're actually jewelry pieces that uh, you could use to put loops through and, and hang dangles from or whatever, but I love that they're curved, so they're going to be perfect to help strengthen the bond of our side piece. So that's what we're going to use them for. You, I bent this just a little bit so that it's more inward and... Uh, I put some glue on the back of it. So it doesn't, you know, meet up 100% with the thing. So a little bit extra glue will help hold it together. So that's how that's going to look. I actually bent this one a little too much and cracked it, but I think once I glue it down, it'll hold. So. <laughs> Another adventure! Yo! Okay. Some glue on this. Oop, that's too big of a glob. And some back here. And get this alpaca fiber off of it. <laughs> that stuff is everywhere. Now I also have, I keep all kinds of things, just never know when I'm going to use them. So I have like all kinds of little doodad, brass, brass doodads in there. And then I have more clocky parts in here. And these are a little bigger than the other ones I use. So I think they'll look better on this bigger piece. I also found this thing that looks kind of like a compass. So I think... I'm going to use this kind of like, maybe put a ribbon on it and have her hold it. I love that. That's a really cool piece. I don't even know where I get all this stuff sometimes. <laughs> anyway, I've got, uh, let's see, silver and bronze. Different sizes. I'm going to get out a few of each one. That says V-E. I guess that used to say love. But well... We'll lay these out first and see how we like them. Okay, that's a good assortment. So I'd put, if you have like thick and thin things, like this is thicker and this is thinner, I'd put the thinner things on the bottom. Um, and you sort of vary the color so that it doesn't, you know, kind of all look exactly the same. That's cool. It's kind of big though. Hmm. But I could use it and sort of cover up that one loop. 
on there. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. This might be good. Maybe do one of these. One of those, something like that. And you could even put that back there. It's kind of too chunky though. Yeah, kind of like that. Make sure I have the same thing for the other side. So one of those. One of those. One of those. Looks good. Let's do it. So it looks like the first thing we'll glue down is this. More alpaca fiber. that's off to that side and then this one we'll put in the center that's bigger And then this one kind of off to the other side. I'm going to glue this down. I'll be right back. Well, I got a little bit too excited with the steampunk decorations and I forgot my original plan, which was to put this down. So, I still want to use it, but I'm not going to be able to use this part. I'm going to have to cut that off. Oh, well. Live and learn. So, I'm just going to cut the edges of that off and hopefully still be able to glue this nose piece down. I would slip that underneath it, I think. Yeah, so I'll do this one side at a time. So I'm going to put some glue right up under there and right across the top of that. And then I'm going to try to use the wire to kind of push some of the glue underneath here. To help hold it. I don't like that piece. Yeah. Alright, so we got that side down. another adventure oh. now this is going to be kind of out of whack but once it's dry I'll be able to bend the nose piece and get them equal so don't worry about that yet we'll get it we'll get it we will get it all right we're going to do the same thing over here and try to get this up underneath the bronze piece. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, it's a little bit askew now, but once they're dry and I don't worry about them coming up, I will bend the nose piece so that these are, um, ah, see, don't move it, don't move it. 
Okay, so after that's done and we get this adjusted, then we're going to put the goggles on the hat kind of as, you know, decoration. But and then we'll be able to finish more about the hat. So stay tuned. Things are kind of coming together here. We got our hat. We've got our goggles. And I went ahead and bent them. So they'll fit on the hat. And I did go ahead and make like a bow for the back made out of a... This is not really tulle. It's more of a... It's just a netting, but it's not as stiff. So I am going to actually go ahead and put that on the back here. You can get a big enough glob of glue out of this almost used up tube. All right. We've got the back of that, which looks super good, super good. Now this is going to go on the front. And then I'm going to tuck this. Oh, that just came right off. Well, maybe that's for a reason, so I could get this on. <laughs> and then I'll put it on. All right, so we're going to pull this around under here, under the, the lace. And I'll just glue that one down too. Okay, and then we'll stick this back on the back. I think it's still gluey. Whoop, maybe not. Fabric also sort of absorbs it, so. All right. So we got our steampunk hat. See, I think that will sit and dry for a minute. Hopefully it will stay in place. Now, this has dried the, uh, the knife thing so we can kind of move her around. Oh, what happened to my gun? Oh, there it is. I thought I lost it. Let's see if that fits in the little holster we made. Had a little bit of glue there. Hopefully that'll work. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. It's too big with those side pieces. All right. Okay, back to the drawing board. Fortunately, I can just pull that right off. So we'll have to make another holster for the gun that's bigger. I did take a piece of ribbon and put on this for her to hold. And then for the sword, I was thinking I want to try to get this coat to sort of cinch up a little bit. And to do that, let's see, what can I do here? Well, I could sew that. Sew that down. Let's see if that would work. And that way I could pull it and it'll sort of hold the coat back so we could see her outfit a little bit better. Because it's thick. Mm, it might go through there. I think I can get that through. I don't have to get it on the doubled part. I can just let that part dangle. All right. I 
I'm going to put one more stitch in for good measure. Since we're going to be pulling on it. I'm going to put a knot in the back of this, I think. <laughs> yep, try not to let, this is kind of a short thread. One more, just to hold it. I think that'll hold. Let's try it. Okay, that can just sort of dangle down. And then when we pull it on the other side, it won't pull through. think that'll work. I'm going to do the same thing over here to hold it. sewing her hair on there. <laughs> okay. I'm tying it off. Then we'll see how this looks. So that pulled the coat back a little bit, which is, is what I wanted. I like the coat a lot, but we want it to be part of the costume. So she's got her little pocket watch there. And I'm going to have to make her a new hol holster for the gun. So let me make that off camera and I'll be right back. We're back with some up grades that I've done okay I found some little brass things so I put one on the new holster and one on the knife case all right now for the pistol I put some additional steampunk items on here and I'm gonna zoom this in so you can see it really well I get it focused so I put some more steampunk things here and that's actually a clock uh, hand and I put this on just because I don't know looks good and for the sword I put some I put this on this is all watch parts put this part on that part and then this decorative thing I don't know looks a little more steampunky all right so get back out here where we can see so what I want to do so we'll put this in here and hopefully this one will fit why it's so hard to get it to fit get it open oh for goodness sake 
Oop. There we go. There we go. So we're going to put our pistol in there. So this fits pretty good. I wanted to put some things on the handle because it's like the things that are on the side of the gun won't be seen unless you take the pistol out. Okay. I want to move these back up to where they're kind of draped down instead of just hanging on her hip. And then move this up a little bit. So she's got her coat. And what I'm going to do with this is just sort of stick it. Hmm. the belt like that so she's got the sword on this side and the gun over here she's got the knife and she can hold this compass which just looks good I don't really do it because she's an air pirate she's got to have a compass yeah all right, let's move up a little more, and we're going to look at a head. So I let her hair down, and she still has this updo, which I actually kind of like. And I kind of want to put the hat over to the side, like that. However, we're going to have to find a way to clip it, or put a ribbon through the hair or a headpiece so let me go look around for what I have for that and then what kind of be done oh my gosh I can't believe it Woo. it's been a long project but we did a lot of stuff we did a whole lot of stuff she looks great oh don't forget the pocket watch all right hang on well we're gonna wind up this series with uh, the end of this video <laughs> and wind up this outfit. I completed the hat and I actually added a couple of feathers as you can see. Uh, how I ended up attaching it was I did put a, I glued a ribbon underneath and I did tie that underneath but because of the shape of Blythe's head that's not enough to hold it on. So I put a couple of these really small bob pins they're one inch bob pins on the ribbon whoa <laughs> I attached the bob pin to I like you know put the ribbon and then the hair I don't know what I'm saying anyway I attached the bob pin to the hair with the ribbon right up under the hat so you can't really see it on both sides so I think that helped stabilize it it is tied in the back but I don't really think that's uh, enough to hold it because their head their heads are like kind of flat so there's nothing to catch it in the back like a human head so anyway I'm gonna take some uh, still shots of of our girl and all the different parts and uh, get let you get a look at the whole creation a little bit better than we can do on video and hope everyone enjoyed this series and look forward to our next series thanks so let's take a look at some of the neat things we've done in this series. Here's our girl in full view with all of her tricks, all of her accessories, everything all together in one place. Wow, I just love how she turned out. She looks like she's really ready to jump on an airship and join the air pirates. 
especially with some of the accessories that we made, which I thought were a whole lot of fun. Here's the uh, sword and the pistol that I added a few little accoutrements to to give them that steampunk flair. That's really easy to do. Just put a bunch of stuff on it and make it look like clock parts. <laughs> and here's uh, our girl with her eyes closed. So you could see the nice look of the uh, eyelids that we painted to go along with her outfit. And this is a picture of the eyes that had the clock parts in them that we made during the section on how to make uh, resin eyes and different accessories. And this is uh, the top hat that we made and put the goggles on. And it did add a feather in there too for extra touch. Uh, here's her dagger on her calf with its design on the outside, a little brass uh, curly Q design to give it a steampunk look or Victorian flair. And there's the pistol holster with the pistol in it, which shows the nice steampunk touches. You can kind of see the sword on the other side. You got weapons everywhere. Here's another shot of the uh, of the hat. More from the back so you can see the bow and, and the feather a little bit better. And then here's a view of the charms and I wanted to add a note about the charms that I didn't mention when we were doing them. One thing about putting the heavy charms on is it helps to keep the eyelid open since we're doing away with that spring. So you do want to have some kind of heavy beads on that one that holds the eyelid open and that that's another function for the charms other than just how they look. And one final look at our girl in her full costume, ready to go, ready to jump on that dirigible, fight fight the air pirates or be an air pirate. I don't know, whichever one she wants. It's fine with me. <laughs> but this was a whole lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That always helps. And we'll be moving on to another project shortly. So stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.